live, getting results. This is News 6 at 11. Now at 11, dozens forced out of their homes after a fire ripped through a condo complex. Families only have a few hours left to remove all of their belongings. I'm Lisa Bell. Matt Austin is off tonight. People living at the Regency Park condos in Lake Mary woke up to people banging on their doors with flames and smoke. News 6's Nikki Zizaza is live from there tonight, not far from Lake Mary High School. And Nikki, it is a race against the clock for tenants there. It absolutely is, Lisa. Tenants I spoke to say they were given one day to clear their things out of units in this building. At least 50 people have been displaced after that early morning fire. And I spoke to one woman who says there wasn't even damage to her apartment. However, she's being forced to move out because of the smoke damage. This is huge. This is crazy. It's crazy. Rachel Hovance returned to the Regency Park at Lake Mary condominiums Monday afternoon to collect her belongings. We've just been told we have until tomorrow morning to get our stuff out. So that's all we're trying to do right now before they say we can't come back in. Hours earlier, Hovan says she jumped out of bed to escape heavy smoke filling the hallways and pouring out of windows as a two alarm fire ripped through her complex. Neighbors. The alarms were all going off. The fast moving fire damaged multiple units, forcing tenants to self evacuate and scramble to find their pets and loved ones through plumes of smoke. None of us thought that it was as bad as it was. We all thought we were going back in in a couple of hours. Hovan says the Red Cross stepped in to assist families affected by the fire by putting them in area hotels. But the mother of three says the impact is greater. My son goes to school in Castleberry at a magnet school. So we're in Lake Mary, so there's only one bus for him. So now it's like schools affected. This is huge. As for what's next for Hovance, well, she says the Red Cross gave her a voucher that she can use to stay at an area hotel, but she says she ha she does not know what she's going to do after that expires. And firefighters say no one was injured, and we still are working to find out what the cause was of this fire. For now, I'm live in Lake Mary, Nikki Zizaza, getting results, New 6. Nikki, thank you. A push to crack a teen's mysterious death. Tonight, investigators issued a new alert more than a year after 17-year-old Bryce Williams was shot and killed in Lake Hodge Park in Castleberry. New 6's Eric Sandoval spoke with the victim's grandmother. Some days are easier than others, and some days you just can't pull it together. So. I get it. Kim Crow says the last 15 months have been some of the toughest she's ever experienced. Some days are angry frustration, you know, because you feel in your heart of hearts that somebody has to know something. Know something about what happened in this park on New Year's Day 2018. Castleberry police say her grandson, 17-year-old Bryce Williams, was shot as he sat inside a car with two of his friends. One of them, hiding under a blanket, called 911. Okay, what's going on? Somebody, somebody shot him. Somebody shot somebody? Tonight, Crow says she thought William's cell phone would hold all the answers they were looking for. Been checked up one side and down the other, and, you know, we're still nowhere closer than day one. That's one of the reasons she says Castleberry police have reissued this alert. Calling William's case an unsolved homicide, they're appealing to anybody who may have information about who shot him. Crow says she's appealing to his friends. Bryce was our best friend, and if he really was a best friend to somebody who knows something, this is how you're going to honor him. And that was News 6's Eric Sandoval reporting. Castleberry police want to get crime results. We have posted their direct contact information at clickorlando.com. Just search for the story on the home page. Also developing tonight, a warm-up and some rain later this week. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is getting results, pinpointing the temps before you walk out the door tomorrow morning, Tom. Yeah, I've really enjoyed this cooler air, Lisa, but I'm afraid it's going to check out on us pretty soon. High pressure totally in control and no real clouds tonight, which is both good and bad. Currently in Orlando on the health camera, we're at 67. But come look at these lows. Before it's over tonight, we drop all the way down to 58 in Orlando, 52 in Ocala, and 57 from Palm Coast to 58 in Melbourne. I will be right back. We'll talk about how much more warmth we get in here tomorrow. We are going above average, and then we'll look down the road for the rest of the work week. 
Tom, thank you. Developing tonight, the search for a killer. Deputies are trying to figure out what led up to the deadly shooting of a 14-year-old boy. The victim, Anthony Reed, was a student at Memorial Middle School in Orange County. It's just a sad thing. 14 years old, the kid had just started living. I'm doing nothing bad and not like that. It was just, they were just hanging on that man. Neighbors say someone in a car shot Reed and drove off on Saturday. It happened at the intersection of J.R. Street and Starbright, Starbright Drive near the Mall at Millennia. Deputies are looking for a motive but say the shooting is likely not random. Reed would have turned 15 next month. If you have any information about the shooting, you're asked to call the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Well, these next few days could be the most important yet in our mission to get results and drive change with Florida's texting law. As soon as tomorrow, the state House and Senate will begin debating their versions of a distracted driving bill. The Senate's bill would make Florida a hands-free state, while the House version only makes texting while driving a primary offense. Either bill would strengthen Florida's laws against texting and driving. New 6 anchor Matt Austin has made this his mission after he was seriously injured in a crash by a driver who admitted to texting and driving back in 2016. Matt will be in Tallahassee bringing you updates each step of the way tomorrow. You can expect his live reports to begin tomorrow on News 6 at noon. Meantime, you can head to clickrolando.com slash driving change to find out how you can contact your state lawmakers to have your voice heard on distracted driving. As SpaceX tries to figure out what caused an anomaly with its Crew Dragon capsule over the weekend, crews on the Cape are gearing up for an exercise with another capsule that will one day take astronauts into space. The first at-sea exercise with Boeing's Starliner training capsule is now just hours away. This search and rescue training will happen over the next several days. It's ahead of a test flight scheduled for August. This is a similar exercise that was done with the Crew Dragon capsule last Last December. SpaceX has not said much about the possible explosion. CBS space analyst Bill Harwood says whatever happened will most likely delay the first launch with astronauts. Obviously, with that vehicle, we think destroyed. I say we think because SpaceX hasn't confirmed anything about the status of the vehicle. The in-flight abort test certainly is going to slip, and with it, we think, the first piloted flight of this new capsule. Right now, the launch is set for July. Get to know the crew of astronauts that will be a part of the mission at clickrolando.com slash space. Lake County officials are hoping to move forward with a plan to build a monument-style plaque for the Groveland Four in front of the historic courthouse in Tavares. Earlier this year, Governor Ron DeSantis pardoned the four African-American men 70 years after they were falsely accused of raping a 17-year-old white woman in Lake County. News 6 obtained these examples of what the plaque could look like. They were posted in the Lake County agenda ahead of tomorrow's meeting. If approved tomorrow, staff will begin seeking proposals for construction. The meeting starts at 9 in the morning. A proposal to ban plastic straws and styrofoam on city property is gaining support. Tonight, the New Smyrna Beach Neighborhood Council voted unanimously to recommend that city commissioners adopt an ordinance to ban the use of plastic straws. The ordinance is aimed at city events and would ban the sale and use of plastic straws and styrofoam. Commissioners are expected to vote on the ordinance in June. New at 11, a speed trap backfires for Florida police. The warning sign they didn't even notice. Plus. A building crumbles over the edge. Now there are concerns more will follow. What caused that sudden collapse coming up, Tom? All right, take a look at what's going on. High pressure's in control. We've got clear skies tonight and heat is on the way. There's also a big meteor shower to talk about. We'll break it all down for you and pinpoint tomorrow next. But first, is history preventing a local family from going green? So I thought, you know, this would be a nice step forward and set an example for my kids. Their push for solar power hits a snag and how the city is responding on this Earth Day next at 11. You're watching News 6 at 11 live on a Monday night, getting results for Ocoee, Oviedo, and all of Central Florida. Keep it here. We will be right back. This week, Cool Bear's got Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark, Charles Barkley, Zach Galifianakis, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Henry Winkler, and tonight, don't miss Chris Hayes. We'll savings on edge. 
Two big overnight closures. First one is going to be northbound Turnpike right at Osceola Parkway. We see this closure happening quite often. Your alternate exit there to Osceola Parkway head west and then north on 441, which is Orange Blossom Trail. Get you right around that. Also eastbound I-4 right at Maitland Boulevard scheduled to be closed tonight. Follow the detours and that will get you continue eastbound from there. Trooper Steve with your new six traffic alert. I'll catch you in the morning. Live with Matt Austin, Lisa Bell, Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells, and Sports with Jamie Say. This is News 6 at 11, getting results. We do want to get you out to some breaking news happening right now in Samford. These are live pictures in a neighborhood off Samford Avenue that's not far from the 417. Police have the area along Palm Place blocked off right now. It is unclear what exactly happened there, but our crew is gathering updates and we will bring them to you on air and at clickorlando.com. Well, bettering the future or preserving the past. A local man wants to put solar panels on his home nestled in a historic district of Orlando. But he says the city is pushing back. News 6 is not Giannis is in Orlando tonight with a debate. It was at today's city council meeting that Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer once again spoke about the city's goal to be 100% self-sustainable by 2040. And that was funny to this homeowner who says at the same meeting and on Earth Day, the city is stopping him from putting solar panels in the one place of his home that gets the most sun. The city explaining their decision today. Well, you see, this is where the sunlight is. On this Earth Day, Cy Pazam says he wants to do all he can to make our world cleaner. We all read about what's happening to the earth and all the pollution and some of us can do things, others can't. We have the wherewithal to do it and I wanted to do the right thing. And he wants to do so by installing solar panels to have his 1949 home in the historic district of Lake Cherokee completely renewable. So I thought, you know, this would be a nice step forward and set an example for my kids. However, he says the city won't let him, at least on the one part of his roof, he says gets the most sun. But now they're arguing that it's an eyesore, but the only place that the science shows that, that they should be placed is in the front of the house. And he finds it funny that on Earth Day and at a city council meeting where the mayor was touting the city's own goals to be 100% sustainable. Our 2040 sustainability goals in a globally consistent way uh, to help us advance a cleaner, healthier, and more sustainable future for Orlando. That they denied his request to the panels on the front of his house by only allowing them on secondary panels and in the back. All recommendations from the city's Historical Preservation Board. And I'm sorry, buddy, Dyer tried to do what you asked. I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was doing it, and I'm told now, no, it's not the right thing. He said we did approve solar panels anywhere on that property except on that front-facing roof. And the city of Orlando wants to make it clear that Pazam can have solar panels at his house at other places, just not in the front. Pazam said it simply wouldn't work any other way. The city says he could have also appealed it, but didn't. In Orlando, I'm Nadine Giannis getting results. New 6. Nadine, thank you. We'll keep your eyes on the sky. The annual Lyrid meteor shower peaks tonight. The best time to check out the light show is around midnight. There are usually about 10 to 20 meteors per hour during the peak, but it's tough to determine how many will be visible. The shower happens around this time every year when Earth's orbit crosses paths with the comet Thatcher. And we have posted the best ways you can view the Lyrid meteor shower and more about why the phenomenon happens at clickorlando.com. Search for the story on the home page. But really, after this newscast, head outside and you say, look to the northeast. Yep. And you should spot something tonight because the skies are pretty clear out yeah, there. Yeah, the only problem is the moon's really bright. I've got a graphic here to explain, but that's about it. I mean, the sky's just as clear as it can be. So go outside and take it all in. Yeah. Give me just a minute to do the weather before you take off on me. <laughs> Hang in there. Okay, take a look at the graphic we have tonight to show you what's going on. Peak of the showers, Lisa just said, is early morning. Between about midnight, 2 a.m., maybe 3, look to the northeast sky. If you don't know where that is, try to figure it out. Find the Big Dipper in the top of the cup. Points down towards the North Star. Look at the North Star. Just to the right. That's the northeast. So the bright moon is going to kind of play havoc with everything. Might mess it up just a little bit. But we're talking about up to 18 meteors per hour. You figure that out, Lisa, it's what? One uh, every three minutes. Yes, that was my math. One every three or four minutes, you'll figure it out. So good luck seeing the meteors tonight. Let us know if you're seeing them. Take pictures if you can, if you're that good. Tomorrow's forecast looks pretty good. 
Over in Volusia County, Lake Helen, 8 a.m., 59 degrees. By noon tomorrow, 79. Temperature reading at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, about 84. On to Bavard County, Southern Bavard. Over in Mico tomorrow, 64 degrees at 8 a.m. By noon, we're back to 76. The daytime high approaches 80. Overall, a pretty doggone good day tomorrow. Temperature readings getting right to normal or maybe above. Look at this. How did we do today? Low this morning was 54. We'll be close to that tonight, but not quite that chilly. 83 was our daytime high. We missed the normal high by one. We missed the record by 10. So it wasn't really hot at all today. Felt great. I mean, really did. Daytona Beach at news time, 62 degrees. Look at that wind. Calm. Everything has calmed down for now. Here we go. Other temperatures. The village has stopped reporting. That did not update. Everything else is updated. 64 Ocala, 66 in Leesburg, 60 at the Cape. All on the cool side. Wind speed and direction. Well, it was really wicked there for a while today with 15 mile per hour winds gusting up past 20. Kind of rough on the coast. Since then, though, everything has calmed Wind is from the east at 5 in Orlando and 6 in Melbourne. Radar tonight, clear as you would expect it to be. No radar echoes, and I'm really not looking for radar echoes until Friday. So tonight, cool, not cold, but cool and clear. Dry, sunny, and warm Tuesday through Thursday. Then on Friday, our scattered storms will return. Between now and then, this dry air is going to modify a bit, but it's going to take some time for that to change. <coughs> Excuse me, here's the clouds and rain forecast. Onshore flow tide through the day tomorrow may put just a smidge of cloud cover on the coast. Then on Wednesday, little upper level clouds coming through, streaking on by, not a big deal at all, and absolutely still no chance of rain until Friday. Lows tonight, 50s all over, 52 in Ocala, 57 Palm Coast, 58 in Orlando. Here's tomorrow. your forecast brought to you by Del Air Heating and Air Conditioning. In the morning, it is cool, but 81 by noon, and our daytime high hits 85. Here's the week ahead. 85 does it tomorrow. Loads of sunshine. Then normal on Wednesday, 85. But by Thursday, a little above. Friday, we hit 85. But then big scattered showers come back in the forecast, Lisa, for all of Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday. So this last weekend we had will not resemble mm. the upcoming one. Meteorologist Troy Bridges will be in at 5 a.m. Sleep tight, neighbors. Thank you, Tom. Well, do you have what it takes to be on Survivor? The reality show is looking for its next group of contestants. A casting call will be held this Sunday at Victory Casino Cruises in Cape Canaveral. It runs from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. If you would like to audition, we've posted the requirements and the needed forms at clickorlando.com. Search for the link right on the home page. Speeding problems in one Florida neighborhood. Deputies trying to catch speeding drivers, but not having much luck. Next at 11, why their crackdown did not go as planned. Also, wild video of a building taking a big tumble. Neighbors forced to evacuate. Coming up, the reason behind that collapse. Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. Pick 2, 3, 0. Pick 3, 7, 7, 1. Pick 4, 4, 5, 0, 6. Pick 5, 3, 7, 5, 4, 6. Fantasy 5, 21, 12, 33, 10, 36. And Cash for Life, 17, 20, 24, 33, 57. The cash ball is four. Good luck. All new video at 11 showing a building taking a nosedive. This happened in Istanbul. You can see the building slide down a hill before it collapses. Officials say no one was inside and no one was hurt. There are reports that this was caused by the collapse of a retaining wall nearby. Nearly a dozen buildings in the area were evacuated. Thousands of toys getting pulled off the shelves because children could choke on them. Right now, Target is recalling wooden toy vehicles. There have been multiple reports of the wheels falling off, which could become choking hazards. The recall includes Bullseye's Playground toy vehicles, which are sold in stores and online. No injuries have been reported. You are urged to take the toys away from your children and return them for a full refund. New at 11, a speeding crackdown does not go as planned. Deputies in Collier County say they got calls about speeding in one neighborhood. They added patrols but ended up only pulling one driver over. Turns out someone was giving people a heads up. Deputies found this sign near the area saying police ahead. The sheriff's office shared this picture of the sign on Facebook with the hashtags slow down and you got us. 
And take a look at this Florida pup. Her owner came home today to find the six-month-old Rottweiler wedged between a cement block. St. John's County Fire Rescuers responded after an attempt at using soap and water to free her did not work. Rescuers ended up having to use the jaws of life to free the pup named Fifi from her tight situation. They say Fifi was not hurt and is doing fine tonight. Ryan's here, talking magic. They could maybe use the jaws of life right now. <laughs> yeah, they got to pry themselves back it's into the series, right? not looking good. No, it's not. They, uh, they have got no more mulligans, so their backs are against the wall. Right. they got to build their confidence back up now. They did it nine days ago in game one in Toronto. Now the magic. Boy, they really need a road win in game five. Tonight's Sports Desk is sponsored by your Orlando Solar Bears.